Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we are building a new HO scale kit called Dalton's Spark Plugs. It is a background structure and it is the newest kit that I am releasing. Um, it is currently available on the website. Um, the structure is a background kit, so it is only two inches deep and it is seven and a half inches long and six and a half inches tall. Perfect for a background structure against a wall or even on a diorama that you're building and it just goes against uh, the back edge of the diorama. So uh, a great little structure. And like I mentioned, the kit is currently available on my website at jasonjensentrains.com. So you can go to the website, order it, and then watch the video and build it along with me. All right, let's get started on this. The first thing I did was to brace the walls and I used one eighth inch thick uh, strip wood and it is marked with red on the ends. So I'll start with the main building. One on this edge and one on this edge. And like I said, go all the way to the edge. Then put one in the center. Then one on each side up here. Again, all the way to the edge. Two along here. Um, I put one here and one in between the windows. Usually if you're going to get warping, it's going to be in a thin area like that in between two windows or in between, uh, you know, two openings, basically. So you want to make sure that you put some wood in between two openings because that'll tend to bow. Now we'll stain one side and then you can just take clear water if you want and lightly brush over the back side of it too. And that'll help. Okay. On this wall, the wall that has a window in the center and a little one at the bottom. I put bracing all the way to the edge on this side and then I came in an eighth of an inch and put bracing. And I want to point out that it's not two long pieces. Actually, it's there and there. I pieced it together. And it's important to note that I staggered the joints. You don't want the joints right across from each other because it'll bend right there. You want to stagger your joints. Um, this I did use two full pieces of strip wood. Again, all the way to the edge and come in an eighth of an inch. Here are the two little walls that go up at the top. You want to put all the way to the edge and then come in an eighth and then do the opposite on the other piece. And I did not brace uh, this piece. Now that our walls are stained, let me point out how they go together. Uh, we're first going to paint the walls and then assemble it later. But I just want to let you know for when you're putting the bracing on. So like I pointed out, you come in an eighth of an inch from the edge so that this piece fits in there. So it'll go like that. And this one will go like this. And then we have our small walls that go up here. So important to make sure that your clapboard is going the correct direction. Um, you don't want it to be upside down. So double check the direction of the clapboard before you um, brace it. Okay, now that this is all stained and dried, Let's move on to painting. We're gonna paint the walls a dark gray. It's actually 
from Folk Art, and it's called Medium Gray. Really, any gray or any other color that you want to paint it, you can. We're going to do gray with white trim and white windows. Now, I'm using a technique that I use a lot, and it's kind of like dry brushing, but you're just lightly dragging your brush over the walls to get a peeled paint look. I can show you quick what this is looking like. And if you want to, you can even take a sponge Okay, I'll go ahead and finish the rest of this and then we'll uh, move on to our trim. Well, as you can see, the walls are all painted and I've started painting all of the plastic doors and windows. Now we have two big doors and then a small entrance door here and a small entrance door for the rooftop access. And those are all in laser board so just like the plastic windows i'm going to start with desert sand then i'm going to sponge on light buttermilk I just finished gluing the trim around the doors and then I took a paintbrush and painted the inside. Now I've glued the doors together and before we glue these in place very quickly just take a small file we're just going to file the edges so they're nice and flat. All four sides. Then we're going to take our wall and slightly, very lightly, make sure that you get the corners really well. Okay, now we'll get our doors glued in place. And then we'll flip it over after it dries and glue some acetate at the top next i'm working on the roof access there is the front and now you can simply cut the center of it out it's still fragile so be very careful with it next we'll take door trim and glue it on i like to dab it with my finger kind of spread the glue out and it starts to get a little sticky now don't worry if it's curled up a little bit. Um, we're going to glue corner trim on there, uh, which will straighten it out. Okay, then for the door, again, it's two parts. And this door is a little different than the front door. So we'll simply glue that on top and then glue that in place. So I've just glued on my corner trim. So there's a piece there and then two at the top and one on this end i then put corner trim on these now let's glue on our side walls now you'll notice me hopefully you can see the wall is bent a little bit So don't worry, by putting your sidewalls on and then gluing it to the base, it'll straighten out. Okay, let's make sure we have the right sides. Okay, so this side gets glued here. Now, I'm using super glue. Because the wall is bent a little bit, I want to straighten it uh, with this wall because this wall is straight. And we'll use our grid, our mat, make sure it's straight 
it takes just a little bit of time for that glue, that super glue to completely set up, which is good because it allows you to move the walls around um, until you have it perfectly straight. Okay, now let's do the same on the other side. Now we can take our two small walls and glue those at the top. Now let's assemble our little roof access shed. Now looking at this, <laughs> I've already made a, a little mistake, not a big deal, but I cut the trim at the same angle as the wall. And then when you put this on, that makes this too short. So what you want to do is cut that, cut your corner trim the same height as, as this wall. So all we have to do is cut that straight. Okay, perfect. Now, again, I'm going to use some super glue. Now you can see that that straightens that wall. That wall was slightly curved. And now it's straight. Then we'll make sure it's square with the lines on the mat. I should have probably glued the door in first. Uh, oh well. Sometimes if things are bowed a little bit, just bend it the opposite direction. Make sure it's good and straight before you glue it. Next, we're going to move on to the roof. Now, in the kit, you'll get this long white strip. Um, it'll be longer in case you need to cut it or, uh, uh, I mean, adjust it to the length that you need because your walls may be slightly curved out or curved in. So once you get your walls glued in place, then just simply hold it up there and put a mark in and cut it so that it fits perfectly in there. Then uh, I glued it on both ends and then I glued these walls to it also. Now you may want to wait to glue those walls in place after you get this beam put in there. Okay, next we have all of our roof cards and as you can see I painted the underside of it white and the edge so that one fits there that one fits there and then we have this one which will get glued right there now before we glue those I suggest gluing the tar paper on them while they're flat. So I've cut all of my black construction paper into strips and I believe they're three eighths of an inch wide. Yes, three eighths. So now we'll just start in the front and then glue a strip on, overlap it slightly, glue the next one on and cover all of these. Then we can glue them onto the structure. Well, the roof is on. It's all done. Uh, we'll do some weathering later with some weathering powders on it. I'm working on the trim and I suggest doing your end pieces first. That way, when you add trim on the front, it covers up the end of the wood. I just capped the peak of the roof. And the trick to doing that is to fold a piece of black construction paper in half first. Just maybe cut it the length that you want, but then fold it in half. Then cut it to the width that you need, rather than cutting a thin piece and then 
trying to fold that in half while it's thin because it it won't fold evenly and it'll be difficult so just take a piece any size fold it in half then cut it to the width and length that you need okay next let's put some weathering on the roof and we're going to use pigment from ammo and it is city dark dust now we're doing a little bit of dry brushing and the paint i'm using to dry brush with is by ammo and it's called light sand I had completely forgotten about the roof access. <laughs> so um, I painted the underside of the roof card white and glued it on and then glued on the black construction paper and sanded it and then put on the pigments just like we did on the other rooftop. Now let's get that glued in place. Okay, let's move on to the foundation and the loading dock. Um, this is the piece that you'll receive in the kit uh, that will make the uh, loading dock out of. Now, the piece along the top that has an X on it is the piece that you'll use back here. And you'll have to cut that again to the length that you need. Uh, but the rest of these make up the loading dock. Now this piece here, you'll notice there are scribed lines around the edge. So this is the underside. So you'll take this long brick piece and glue it to that side. Then you'll take these and glue them on the ends. You'll then take the back piece, mark back, and glue that on the back. And the lines show you where to glue it. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Make sure that your pieces are perfectly flat. So if you need to bend them the opposite direction, do so. Now again, I want to show you the lines on here. So you'll see, now we'll take this piece and glue it right inside of those lines. Now the back one is in between the two. Okay, so I sprayed it with a gray primer. Now, let's put some value on it. We're going to use gray sky and a sponge. And we don't have to go all the way back because this sits like this okay now let's use some concrete from ammo now we're going to do the sides okay now we'll let that dry and then we're going to use some pigments on it Now let's add some dirt to it. And we're using pigments from Ammo Winter Soil. We'll go heavier along the bottom in the corners. Now we'll take City Dark Dust. 
Okay, it is glued in place. And what I did was I used white Elmer's glue on the bottom of the walls. And then I just put a small dot of super glue in the four corners on the bottom of this. Then stuck it on there and held it. Pretty much everything is nice and straight. Um, you know, before the walls were curved a little bit, um, there was a little bit of warping, but once you get it all glued together, um, it pretty much straightens out. Now we can take Farm Dark Earth, another pigment, and maybe we'll take a smaller brush if I can find one. And now let's really add some dirt in front of those doors and even up on the door okay I went ahead and added some dirt below those doors and a little darker dirt right here below those doors all right now the kit comes with 10 detail parts so let's get a primer sprayed on those and then we'll get those painted and glued in place i love the texture that that uh concrete put on there so here are the 10 castings and i sprayed a gray primer on them now we'll just go ahead and paint them we'll paint these to look like metal um our wood crates let's start with those and let's start with dry brushing iced coffee on them then we'll let that dry and then we'll give it some highlights with desert sand. Okay, so again, I'm using iced coffee and it's kind of just a dry brush technique. Just scrubbing over it, leaving that gray in the cracks. Now we really don't have to paint the back side. Now let's get a smaller brush. Now if you want to mix a little bit of the um, iced coffee with it to darken it up a little bit you can that's about all we're going to do really if you wanted to take some of the pigments and add a little bit of dirt on there you could now we're going to do our metal pieces so i'm using bittersweet chocolate and I'm just dipping my brush in water and we're simply going to do a wash over these now in my same little puddle of the uh, wash of bittersweet chocolate and water, I am mixing burnt sienna. Now this is definitely more paint and less water. Okay, now we'll let these dry good, and then we'll come back with another color. Okay, on some of these, I'm going to take the burnt sienna again, and with a sponge, I'll just sponge on the paint. Okay, now we're going to take light buttermilk. Any off-white or even a light gray. Now, if you wanted, you could even use a metallic color. A silver or a gunmetal gray but we're just going to take a sponge and sponge on our last color again whatever you want it to be light gray off-white silver now you want to take your sponge and sort of pick at it and tear at it you almost want it to come to a point And you want to do very little of whatever color you decide. Very, very little. Now notice on this piece, I'm really focusing more on the sides and the bottom of it. Now you want to take a very small brush. And we're just filling in some of the areas. You should probably get a photo of rusted metal and and see 
it normally forms on the edges and along the bottoms of things. So on the side of this, I'm going heavier with the white paint at the top. I'm just kind of dragging my brush down. Maybe we'll go a little heavier in the center and leave the edges, the uh, rust. Now we're going to take medium rust. Now you may want to do this after they're glued in place. So it's really up to you. And let's get a paper towel. And we're just going to start slowly adding rust to it. Next, we're going to move on to doing the sign that goes on the front. So you're going to want to cut the sign out of the instruction sheet and then glue it onto the cardboard piece that's provided in the kit. Now, the best way to do this is with double-sided tape. But if you don't have double-sided tape, take some Elmer's glue and spread it on there. But spread it on very thin. Um, don't have any water in your brush. Spread it on thin. Um, that way it prevents it from warping. But if it does bend, just sort of bend it the opposite way. Make sure that it's nice and flat. Okay, then we're going to paint the spark plug and glue that onto it. Now we're going to glue this right in the center of that starburst. Make sure your sign is flat. You know, first, first, let's take some bittersweet chocolate and sponge. We're going to dirty up the sign a little bit. Now we'll glue that on the front. And I'm just simply going to center it over the top of these three windows and line it up with the top of this window. Okay, here's where a sign looks like. I think that's so cool. I love it. <laughs> All right, now I went and I made some custom signs that we're going to put on here. And you don't have to add all the signs, um, but these all come in the kit. And actually, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. I should first paint some rust. So we're going to take bittersweet chocolate. Um, a sponge. Have some rust pigment. Somebody sent these to me. Um, I love them. I don't know what they are. Um, so, sorry. <laughs> you could use pastel chalks. You could use pigments from ammo. You could even use colored pencils. Always remember, a little goes a long way. You know, when you're at the bench and you're working on things, it's very easy to forget the scale. Um, I think it's important to keep a little figure, a little HO scale figure on hand uh, to put next to things, to try to keep things in scale. Okay, now we can get these cut out. Okay, I cut out three signs. Now let's grab a marker, a brown marker, and we're going to go over the edges. Now you can hold it in the corner and sort of let it bleed into the paper. Give it even more of a rust look. Okay, they're glued on. Um, I just used regular Elmer's glue and this model is finished. Let me take the camera off and give you a closer look.
All right, well, this was a fun kit to design. Um, I'm definitely going to be designing some more background structures in the future. Uh, I hope you enjoy building this. Um, let's take this over to the layout and find a home for it. All right, again, this was such a fun structure to design. I thoroughly loved it. All right, well, thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreons. Now, if you are a Patreon, you will be receiving a discount code on my Patreon page at the second and third tier level. So again, if you are a Patreon at the second and third tier level, you will be receiving a discount on the kit. Uh, and that goes for every kit that I release. So if you'd like to become a Patreon, uh, you get a discount on every kit that I put out. All right, well, thank you again. And uh, until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.